Issues with multiple regression. So far we found one issue with the multiple regression was R square value which we solved by getting something called adjusted R square penalizing our model with each variable that we are additionally adding. But there is one more issue that we will try to understand. To understand that we will do a lab for us and looking at the results we will try to interpret what this problem is and then we will try to find a solution for that problem again. Let's open the python console. I would suggest you to do it with me. So we will import all the dependencies which is pandas, numpy and matplotlib that we might need to use. Next we will import our final exam data set and we will look into this data set with shape we can directly see over here there are 24 observation with 5 column names or variables. We have semester 1 science, semester 2 science, semester 1 math and semester 2 math. These are the marks of student. There are 24 student in the class and these are the final exam marks of these student. We have to build a regression model which will give us a relationship between all these marks and we will try to interpret how the regression model can be read to find the exact relation between students two semesters of marks of mathematics and science and their final exam marks. So first we will try to build a model with final exam marks taking as y and final exam marks of different different subjects taking into our x variables. So I will import statmodels.api as sm2 build my model. I will define my y and x and add constant to my x values and define it as at x1. Next thing I will define and build a whole model and I will fit it directly. I will try to look at the summary. This is how my model looks like. Over here I can see that the R squared value is 99% and my adjusted R squared value is 98%. Over here all the variables are significant except semester 2 mathematic exam which is giving me 29% of the p-value and if you look at the coefficient the value of this coefficient is negative which means that if a student is getting less marks in semester 2 mathematics he would be getting high marks in its final score but this is quite counterintuitive don't you think because if a person who's getting high marks in any exam would definitely get final exam marks to be high but if he is just you know losing out some marks from one exam he must not get high marks in his exam so there is a problem with this but we will try to figure out what this problem might be so to do that we will take a different route looking at the model sam2 math has to be insignificant that's why we have p value to be 29 percent but just to understand why there is a problem except for semester 2 math marks I will remove semester 1 math marks from my model and rebuild the whole model again like this. I will just run the whole model and I will look into the summary of new model that I have created removing the semester 1 mathematics marks. We see that now semester 2 marks have p value very good and it's not counterintuitive coefficient is positive which means that with the increment in the semester 2 math mark the student's mark should increase. But why this change happened? In our previous model, semester 1 mathematics marks were important than semester 2 math mark. So we should have removed semester 2 math mark. But removing semester 1 math mark has given us another model which is signifying the semester 2 math mark to be better. There is a problem that semester 1 and semester 2 math marks are correlated. That's why we are facing this problem. The whole sense of mathematical model of linear regression should be where all the independent variables should be independent from each other also. They should not be dependent but seem like mathematics marks of semester 1 and 2 are also correlated with each other. That's why we are facing this problem. We can verify this by plotting a scatter plot between semester 1 math mark and semester 2 math marks. We can see over here there is a linear correlation between semester 1 mathematics marks and semester 2 math mark. And if we see the correlation coefficient, we can definitely see that yes, there is a relation between semester 1 math and semester 2 math mark of 0.99.
99 percent of collinearity we can see in these two variables so if there is a dependency in the independent variables our model will take a jump around so we need to take care of this problem also so this is the problem of multi collinearity multiple regression is wonderful it allows us to understand or consider the effect of multiple variable simultaneously but this is also extremely unpleasant because it allows you to consider the effect of multiple variables simultaneously if there is any dependency in those multiple independent variables the relationship between explanatory variables are the key to understanding multiple regression if there is a relation in between those independent variables we have to face something called intercorrelation or multicollinearity which will just toss around our exact model what multicollinearity will the parameter estimate will have inflated variance presents in multicollinearity which means that the constant that we would be getting will be too high to be true sometimes the sign of the parameter estimate or the coefficient that we have estimated will tend to change as we saw in the semester 2 marks in the model 1 which was negative which should have not been if the relationship between independent variables grow really strong then the variance of parameter estimate tend to be infinity but can we prove it or can we prove it even before building the real model we have to find it out okay to detect the multi collinearity we will just take the example like this. so if we have a predictive model y and predictors are x1 x2 x3 and x4 this would be our regression model if we want to find any collinearity or relation between x1 to other variables x1 and x2 or x2 x3 x3 x4 we can use correlation coefficient but it's not a good idea why because correlation would tell us the dependency between x1 and x2 or x2 or x3 or x3 and x4 but not between x1 and x2 x3 and x4 combined so for that we need to come up with a different method what we can do is we will remove our y from our equation and we will bring our x1 from here to here and we will build the model again taking these parameter which is my x1 now i will build this model and the r square value which this model is going to give me i will call it r1 simultaneously i will just one by one i'll take x2 in front and i will build the model then x3 in the front i will build the model and x4 in the front and i will build the model and giving the r square value as these names let's take the example of x3 or r3 if r3 is 95% we would be able to understand that x3 now is highly correlated with x2 x1 and x4 since it can be explained as linear combination of other three for each variable we'll find r square value and if we have r square value more than 95% for that particular variable we will say that this variable is multiply correlated with all the other independent variable and we will chunk that variable out but using r square every time is not that intuitive it's not that good we need to come up with a different scale or different measure for it which would be called vif so the formula of vif is 1 divided by 1 minus r square of for that particular variable which was taken in front in python we will need to write a custom vif function that we will write but if we see r square value and corresponding vif values this is how it would look like if the r square value is 40% vif would be 1.67% around so so on looking at this table we can move to 80% of r square and vif value of 5 so basically if we have any vif value which is more than 5 we will chunk that variable out because that variable is highly correlated with all the other independent variables next we will do a lab on multicollinearity